Hello and welcome back to yet another video. Uh, my name is Alex Ortiz with 8 Tech Tutorials and today we're going to be discussing the differences between a team managed project and a company managed project. If you haven't already, I have two other videos where we've been discussing how to get started with Jira and the differences between a Kanban, Scrum and bug tracking project. So this is the third in my series where we're going to be talking about team versus company. A lot of companies and a lot of teams get tr really tripped up with this, right? So this is, I think, a very important video in your agile journey, in your Jira journey, really, because what I'm going to be covering here is going to really clarify some stuff for you, some really critical things, because I see a lot of teams get very frustrated with Jira because they picked the wrong project type. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you smash that like button. And if you have any questions about anything, make sure you drop a comment. I'm going to be reading all of those and addressing any and all your questions. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. Okay. So at this point you have your Jira and you're creating a project, whether it be for the first time or maybe you're just exploring what the different project types are, we're going to be talking about the differences between team managed and company managed. Okay. Um, at this point, the project template is not as important, right? Uh, if you go look back, back and look at my last video, we talked about the different project templates, whether it be Kanban, Scrum or bug tracking. Um, that's not important for the purpose of this video. Eventually it does, it, there is some importance in that template, but for this video specifically, we are just going to be focusing on this blue versus purple. All right. So let's talk about team managed first. Well, actually let's just talk about the whole thing and then, um, we'll just be comparing the two and I'm going to be giving you some insight into the differences between the two and ultimately making a recommendation from based on the 200 projects that I've configured, which one is best for you. So again, if you haven't smashed that subscribe button or the like button, please make sure you do that now because this is super valuable, helps the algorithm and it helps me know if these videos are of value to you. So anyways, team managed. Okay. And let's see, let's see how to explain this, right? So a team managed project is really going to be dedicated for those teams that they want to, they're interested in using Jira. They want to get started with Jira and they just want to do it now, right? Like it's like the kid in the candy store. He just wants his candy now. Right. And the team managed one is, it's, it's, it's a fully functional Jira project, right? But you get guardrails. You, you get these rails, like if you've ever been bowling, right? You get these guardrails here that prevent you from going into the gutter, right? So it's going to keep you safe within the world of Jira. And this is, again, perfect for those teams that don't hire someone like me, like an expert level consultant, right? Or maybe they don't have a dedicated Jira administrator on site, right? So if you don't have either of those two, right? And you just have a self-organizing team looking into Jira, the team one is, is a, it's a great way to go, but as teams mature and as your level of comfort with Jira increases, you start finding the limitations of a team managed project very quickly. And unfortunately, Atlassian, the makers of Jira do not make it easy for you to transition between a team managed and a company one. There is some finesse to, I mean, you can do it, but there's some finesse and, and this is where you really need to hire like an expert like myself to help you with that transition. But most teams, for the most part, if you pick team, you're sticking with team. And if you pick company, you're sticking with company. So before you start your project, right? And before you invest all this, all these calories and time and energy and get your team going in a direction, you should listen to this video so that you can make the best decision for your team. Okay. So pretty much in a nutshell, team is, a team managed one is, as again, super basic, gets you into Jira, gets you executing in, in either a Kanban or Scrum very quickly, very easily with not a lot of opportunity for you to get in trouble. A company one is like the wild west, right? Like it gives you every feature, everything is unlocked and you can get into trouble if you don't know what you're doing, right? If you don't know how you're configuring this project. So this is why some teams shy away from this, right? They're reading through this and going like, well, I don't have, I'm not a Jira expert, right? I just need to track my work. And when you have that mindset and you go to the team, perfectly fine. It's, it's going to work for you. But the problem becomes when your team matures and then they get comfortable, you're going to run into some significant limitations. So let me talk about those limitations because if I, I think if I can convince you that it is worth 
taking the risk of going company over team, right? Because you're setting your future self for success. I think then this video would have been successful. So let's just jump into what these differences are, right? So right out of the gate, simplified versus expert. I think I've been beating this to death here because I've kept saying it over and over. So let's skip over that. But one of the things that you can do here is anyone in your team can manage a team manage, right? So basically everybody can do it because it's it's simple. It's a simple interface. It's a simple thing. You can't get into too much trouble. Now, this also means that anybody in your organization by default can click on create project and make a team managed project. This can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing because depending on the size of your organization, pretty much anyone can make projects at will. Now, there's no limitations to the, the at least that I'm aware of, to the number of Jira projects you can create, but you can very quickly overwhelm your team or your organization with like hundreds of Jira projects because everybody's just making projects, right? Versus a company managed project, only a site administrator can create these projects. So if if you're trying to at least control the number of projects that is in your organization, that's one pro for the uh, company one, right? Because not everybody is going to be able to create projects, right? You have you're making you're taking a very cognitive and very strategic method, and and you're thinking about it, and you're creating that project. So that's that first one. Next. The settings at that team manage one are just for that project. And again, this is good if you have one or two teams, but if you have multiple teams, right? Like let's just say, let's just say you're a big organization and you want to templatize the settings and you just want to apply those settings over and over and over. And by that workflows, issue types, fields, right? And we're going to talk about all of those in future videos. But if you wanted to keep all that consistent, you would need a company one, right? Because you cannot do that with the team one. The next one is issue types and custom fields. Now this one I do give, I, I bow <laughs> to the team one because I wish that the company one was as easy as this, but if your team is adding issue types and custom fields, it is super easy to do in the simplified one, right? It is just impacting that project itself and you basically don't, don't you can't break things, right? In the company one though, you do have a lot more control and power and you have a lot more options, but it becomes very, it becomes a tangled mess very quickly if you don't know what you're doing, right? And again, my and I'm gonna cover all of this, how to do all of this in all my future videos. So if you aren't subscribed yet or you haven't smashed that like button, make sure you do so now because you're not gonna wanna miss out on all the videos that I have coming your way. Because by the time I'm done with, I got about 200 videos planned here, you're going to be a Jira expert. <laughs> and so if any of this is confusing to you, make sure you're subscribed because I'm gonna be basically showing you the way. And so anyways, um, coming back to this, that's the kind of the two differences, right? Now the next one's on the workflows, right? So <clears throat> in the team one, again, you have the power to create these workflows. It's gonna be easy, it's gonna be intuitive, but it's not gonna be as powerful as the workflows that you get with the company one. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of customization you can do on a company managed workflow with respect to statuses, functions, transitions, bunch of power, right? Very, very powerful. I, I mean, I could probably just dedicate like four or five videos, like an hour each, just talking about all the capabilities that you can do in the workflows. And you're just not going to get any of that in the team one. And then the last thing is, and this, at least with this box, right, is the access level permission. So in the team one, it's, it's very black and white, right? It's very, you either have access or you don't have access. You're either an administrator and you have all the power or you have access with limited power, but you have access or you don't, right? That, those are like basically your three options. In the company one, you get like 12 to 20 levers that you can pull to set different permission settings. So if if you, if you really wanna fine tune, right? Who can do what in your Jira projects, company manages the way to, for you to go. If you don't care and you just want people to access, then that team managed one is gonna be better for you. So that's that on that expert versus configuration. Let's go to the features, right? So what you're getting in a team one is what's called a basic roadmap. Again, I'm gonna be showing you all of this when we jump into the actual projects right now. I'm just kind of giving you the breakdown because this is really key for you to understand the differences, but you get a very basic roadmap, which is basically epics and stories. You get to see a timeline for your epics and your stories uh, based on start and due dates. It looks very much like a Gantt chart, right? Well, again, we'll be covering all that in future videos, right? But you just get that very basic. You get the epic and you get the story. And that's pretty much it. Like you can filter by your versions and 
and that's like essentially i mean you can do a couple more things but in a nutshell like it's super limited versus if you're on the premium right and you don't get this on the standard even if you go company but on the premium and you have a company you get a very very advanced roadmap right and again i can probably dedicate another five to ten videos just on advanced roadmaps and i will right so if you haven't already <laughs> make sure you subscribe and like because i'm going to be teaching you all about advanced roadmaps and so if you're on that premium right you're going to be able to get this amazing super powerful um roadmap advanced roadmap that is going to give you all the visibility in the world into our your organization so super powerful and just just for this feature alone just for the advanced feature alone i would recommend you do company and you do premium right so if you can afford it that feature alone i guarantee you is worth your buck but if that's not if you guys aren't again if your team is very small and you're just kind of getting started that's why teams go with this basic right but as your team grows and as the complexity of your team grows right and as more teams start adopting jira in your organization right it gets very challenging to track that cross team collaboration so don't don't handicap yourself from the beginning by not going to the company one so you can at least have the potential to have that advanced roadmap um the next one's all about filters or issues right sorry all about issues and in a team one you can just see all the issues that are in your project or your board right and that's it in a company one you can actually pull issue issues from pretty much anywhere in jira right so that i think is super powerful too when you're talking about like cross team collaboration if you're again a very siloed very small just a team of one everybody's like under one roof team one's okay but the second you're in a true organization right like a, a big organization with a lot of moving parts a lot of different teams a lot of disciplines and functionalities across your organization that company one is, makes a lot more sense because you can all of a sudden link issues together epics can have many children from very different projects right so it gets a lot more complex but at least you have that ability to do that if you wanted to uh, the next one are filters right so standard filters just come out of the box with this team one but with the company one you're going to get quick filters right which allow you to really fine tune what information is visible on your boards and what information you're seeing um with respect to again what what you're interested in right so you don't get that with the team so a lot of teams are like frustrated because they can't see the data they want to see right they're just seeing everything and they just want to like hone in and they can't do it and then they think jira's garbage and again it's just limitations of that team one which again it's great if you're just starting out but once you're mature you want that company and unfortunately as i mentioned at the beginning you cannot change right you can't be a team today and go to company you have to essentially hire me right and and help you with that transition because it is, it is not trivial to do the transition right but i've done enough of these where um i can do them very comfortably and then the last thing is uh the reporting right again you get a burn down in the team but in the in the company you're going to get a lot more functionality so that's pretty much it for this um i i hope you enjoy i know this was a bit of a long video right because there's a lot to cover here but I'm hoping you got some value out of this because out of all the teams that I coach and counsel, right, and that I guide in, in their Jira journey, this is the first mistake that they make that I then have to come up and come in and clean up, right? And so I wanted to spend a good amount of time here just to really help you out because if you can get this part right, your Jira experience is going to be way better, right? So my recommendation, my expert level recommendation is always, always, always go blue, right? Always blue. Always go with the expert one because even though it is harder, right? One or two hours of my time, I'm going to get you configured and running, right? Versus the headaches you're going to get because you don't pay up a couple hundred dollars to get like someone like me to help you out. It's just going to have significantly more financial burdens on you in the long game then if you just pony up a couple hundred dollars and basically hire me to help you get this configured correctly out of the gate. So anyways, those are my two cents. Hopefully this video was valuable to you. Um, we are going to be actually selecting this company managed project. We're going to go to the next screen in the next video. And so if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't liked this video, make sure you drop a like. If you have any questions about anything I talked about, make sure you uh, drop a comment, right? I'm going to be reading those and answering them for you. And then finally, you've heard me say this once or twice, but I am available for hire, right? So I have an entire agency here. I This is what I do for a living. I spend 12 to 14 hours a day living in Jura. So if you want an expert, come in to your organization, help you out, trying to see where you went wrong in Jira, or if you're just, maybe, maybe you're just considering Jira for the first time, right? And you just want some expert guidance. Um, 
feel free to check out my information. It's on the description below. Um, you will find my website. You will find all my contact information. I have books. I have blog posts. I have um, training, dedicated training, specialized training, whatever training you want. I got it. I'm doing it. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank <music> you.